सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लम ऑन पार्शियल बैलेंसिंग ऑफ प्राइमरी अनबैलेंस्ड फोर्स इन रेसिप्रोकेटिंग इंजिन Let us understand primary and secondary unbalanced force in a single cylinder engine. This is the piston cylinder arrangement. This piston is connected to this crank through the connecting rod. Now the length of connecting rod is L where the radius of the crank is R. Now when the crank rotates through an angle theta from this inner dead center with angular velocity omega then the piston reciprocates so here this is the line of stroke of piston so here is the reciprocating motion in both the direction of the piston along this horizontal line now what is happening when this crank rotates in clockwise direction then the piston will move in this forward direction so the velocity as well as acceleration is towards the right hand side so when this acceleration is towards the right hand side then due to the masses of the reciprocating parts there is the inertia force that is applied in opposite direction so this inertia force we will indicate with fi and which is in the opposite direction that is in the towards the left hand side now what is this acceleration of piston so we will indicate with a to the base p so acceleration of piston is equal to formula is r omega square cos theta plus cos of 2 theta by n where r is the radius of the crank omega angular velocity then theta that is the angle through which the crank moves from this inner dead center and n is the obliquity ratio where n is equal to l by r so this is the formula so how to calculate this inertia force fi so we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration so we have to just multiply with m that is m into ap which is equal to m r omega square in bracket cos theta plus cos of 2 theta by n now this force fi is also known as unbalanced force that is f to the base u now if i multiply mr omega square inside the bracket then we will get two terms so first term is mr omega square cos theta and this is known as the primary force and second term mr omega square cos of 2 theta by n and this is known as the secondary force now for this primary force when we put theta is equal to 0 or 180 degree then we get the maximum primary force and that is equal to mr omega square now for this secondary force when we put this theta is equal to 0 degree 90 degree 270 degree and 360 degree then we will get the maximum secondary force and that is equal to mr omega square by n in case of slow speed or moderate speed engine secondary unbalanced force is small as compared to primary unbalanced force we will understand the partial balancing of primary unbalanced force now what is this primary unbalanced force fp is equal to mr omega square cos of theta now if we observe this diagram and if we consider the mass m is placed at this crank pin c and it is rotating through an angle theta with angular velocity omega then due to the rotating mass there is the centrifugal force that is getting developed in radially outward direction so i will show here the centrifugal force that is mr omega square now we will make here the two components of this centrifugal force horizontal component and vertical component so horizontal component is mr omega square cos of theta now this horizontal component if we observe that is nothing but primary unbalanced force and what about the vertical component so this vertical component mr omega square sin of theta now this vertical component does not affect on the reciprocating motion of this piston so we have to consider only mr omega square cos of theta now how to balance this primary unbalanced force 
so here the mass m is rotating so if i place the balancing mass diametrically in opposite direction of this m then we will get the answer so i will place here balancing mass mb so here is the balancing mass mb which is having radius rb now we know that for this mass m what is the radius radius of the crank that is r now this balancing mass is also rotating and hence there is the centrifugal force so i will show here the centrifugal force which will act in radially outward direction and that is mb rb omega square now for this centrifugal force there are also two components that is the vertical component as well as horizontal component now here the angle theta is there so if we observe this is the common line and this is the diametrically opposite line so here is the angle theta so what is the this component horizontal component so we say that mb rp omega square cos of theta and what about the vertical component so here vertical component is mb rb omega square sin of theta now we know that this vertical component of m does not affect on the reciprocating part so we should not consider this so i will remove this component so we have to understand only these three components now from the diagram we can say that these two are opposite in direction so we will say that mb rb omega square cos of theta is equal to mr omega square cos theta so here omega square cos theta common and getting cancelled so mb rb is equal to mr but if we observe this diagram here the vertical component which is not getting balanced so this component will remain unbalanced and therefore mb rb omega square sin of theta remains unbalanced so we can say that portion of primary unbalanced force is balanced that is here is the partial balancing of this primary unbalanced force because only one part is getting balanced due to this opposite direction horizontal component but this component is not getting balanced so here this partial balancing of this primary unbalanced force so how we can write this statement because of this vertical component is not getting balanced so we can write here mb rb omega square cos of theta is equal to mr omega square cos theta into c because for this component partial balancing is taking place so this c is important and this c because the portion of primary unbalanced force c is getting balanced so portion which getting balanced is known as c now we will move to the next that is we will understand what is the horizontal force fh so fh is equal to so if we observe this diagram then mb rb omega square cos theta we have to write as mr omega square cos of theta into c so here fh is equal to mr omega square cos theta minus mb rb omega square cos of theta because both are in opposite direction so we have to give this term as a minus sign so instead of mb rb omega square cos theta we can write here mr omega square cos of theta into c so what is this fh so we can write the formula when solving the problem fh is equal to 1 minus c mr omega square cos of theta so this is the first formula that we get now we will move fv that is the vertical component of the force so if we observe this diagram how many vertical components are there so here is mb rb omega square sin theta so how we can rewrite this so mb rb omega square sin theta instead of this mb rb we have to write mrc omega square sin theta so here this is the second formula that we have to apply now what is the resultant force so resultant force fr is equal to under root of fh square plus fv square so we have to use these two terms and 
which is equal to m r omega square under root of 1 minus c cos square theta plus c square sin square theta. So this is the third formula that we get. So by using three formulas we can solve the problems on partial balancing of primary unbalanced force. Given question, a single cylinder reciprocating engine runs at 300 rpm and has a stroke length of 250 mm. The mass of reciprocating parts is 40 kg and the mass of revolving parts at 125 mm radius is 28 kg. If only two-third of the reciprocating parts and all the Revolving parts are to be balanced. Find the following. First, balancing mass required at radius of 350 mm. Second, resultant or residual unbalanced force in magnitude and direction when the crank has turned 45 degree from inner dead center. Let us understand given data with the help of diagram. Speed of engine 300 rpm. So from this speed we can calculate the angular velocity omega. So omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. N is equal to 300. So which is equal to 31.4159 radians per second. Now next term stroke length is mentioned. Now if we observe the diagram here the stroke length that is for the reciprocating parts. So when the one stroke of this piston is getting completed that is equal to L which is equal to 250 mm at the same time this crank rotates from this inner dead center to the outer dead center. So the total horizontal distance covered that is equal to 2R that is 2 times of radius of this crank. So we can say that L is equal to 2R which is equal to 0.25 meter. So R is equal to 0.125 meter. So this is the term that we have useful for the calculation. That is the radius of the crank. Now next is mass of reciprocating parts. So here is the mass of reciprocating parts and which is equal to 40 kilogram. Now out of this 40 kilogram, 2 by 3 portion is getting balanced. So we can say that value of C that is equal to 2 by 3 portion. 2 by 3 portion for this 40 kilogram is getting balanced. Now this mass we will say that M which is equal to. So I will say that M is equal to 40 kilogram. And out of this C 2 by 3rd part is getting balanced. Now next mass of rotating parts. So for this rotating part, so we know that this mass M is the rotating and which is equal to 28 kg. So we will say that this M1 is equal to 28 kg. Now this whole mass is getting balanced. So here what is the value of C? So here C is equal to 1 because this total mass M1 is getting balanced. Now the radius. So radius R is 125 mm. Then we will move Rb. So the radius of the balancing mass. So radius of this balancing mass that is Rb is mentioned 0 0.35 meter. And then theta. So we know that the crank angle theta from the inner dead center that is equal to 45 degrees. So this, this information is mentioned. Now we will first calculate what is the mass of the balancing mass. So here Mb Rb is equal to. Now two masses are involved in this process. First one is the reciprocating mass. Second one is the rotating mass. So how to use the formula. So for the reciprocating mass value of C is mentioned. So we will say that Mb Rb is equal to C into M into R plus now for the rotating mass C into M1 into R. So here value of C for this reciprocating is 2 by 3 multiplied by 40 into R. So value of R is 125 millimeter that is 0 0.125 meter. Now in the second bracket we have to add this in the second bracket. Now for rotating mass value of C is 1. M1 28 kilogram and R 0 0.125. So when we solve this, then there is only one unknown term that is Mb, that is the balancing mass. 
and which is equal to 19.5238 kg. Now we will calculate resultant unbalanced force. So what is the formula for FR? That is under root of Fx square plus Fv square. So we will calculate here Fh and Fv separately. So first we will calculate Fh. So Fh is equal to 1 minus C M R omega square cos of theta. Here C is the part that is the portion of the reciprocating uh, parts which is balanced. M is the mass of reciprocating parts. R is the radius of this crank, omega, angular velocity and theta that is the angle through which this crank rotates from this inner dead center. So if we observe all the values are known 1 minus 2 by 3 m that is 40 into r 0.125 omega 31.41 finance square and cos of 45. So answer is 1163.142 newton. Now Fv that is the vertical unbalanced force. So Fv is equal to mrc omega square sine of theta. So here all the, we have to put all the values and sine of 45. So answer is 2326.2841 newton. Now what is the resultant force? So we have to put the value of Fh and Fv in this square root. So here is the value of Fh and here is the value of Fv. So when we calculate this then we will get 2600.8646 newton. Now we have to find out the what is the uh, direction of this resultant unbalanced force. So how to calculate this direction of the resultant unbalanced force. So this is here is the formula tan of alpha is equal to Fv by Fh. And when we put this Fv and Fh then it is equal to 2 and therefore alpha is equal to tan inverse of 2 that is 63.43 degree.